worse, the graveyards of King Tut and Queen Nefertari are being survived by, surveyed by the latest state-of-the-art cameras and lasers, the new tools of archaeology. NBC's Jim Bitterman reports on how and why the science is changing. Go, go! Dr. Indiana Jones may not really have done much for archaeology, but he certainly did a great deal for the image of archaeologists. Nothing shocks me. I'm a scientist. In fact, the business of digging up the past, while rarely a very glamorous job, can at least be exotic, dramatic, and even mysterious, especially among the ancient tombs of Egypt, where the sands are as rich as the history. Archaeologists have always liked digging around in old Egyptian graveyards because the dry heat preserves everything so well, but also because the ancients had the habit of trying to take it with them, which means there's a lot out here to dig up. But now, the science and the scientists are changing. French architects have been inside the pyramid drilling holes. And Japanese remote sensing experts have been ping-clinking the Sphinx, looking for secret chambers. And this week, with their trusty Black & Decker and high-tech fallout from the space program, Americans, after mere days of drilling, brought back video from inside a 5,000-year-old limestone pit that had been the subject of boundless archaeological theorizing for more than three decades. Remote sensing is here, and remote sensing can do a lot of things to archaeology that were not possible in the past. To look at the ground and perhaps see things that cannot be see, seen by the human eye. What the scientists saw when they poked down their state-of-the-art camera and fiber-optic light source were the ancient pieces of a pharaoh's funeral boat the sister ship of one dug up in 1954 by a more traditional archaeologist who today objects to the modern high-speed approach to what he believes should be a more contemplative science. Archaeology is a delicacy. You have to whisper, not to shout. You have to touch, not to grasp. Any progress, Doctor? Finding anything at all? Well, in archaeology, one must have infinite patience. But while delicate, quiet research may be for many attraction enough to dare the curses of the pharaohs, some have always been more attracted by the very interesting possibility of finding fame and fortune in the sand. This is all there is. Where's the treasure? The gold and jewels. More traditional archaeologists argue that many of the discoveries by the high priests of high technology are not new at all, but were already known, or at least would have been known if research had been done properly. Using old maps and relying on local legend, archaeologist Jacobus Van Dyke poked underground for more than a decade looking for the tomb of King Tut's treasurer. He finally found it. And he doubts that the high-tech boys could have found it any faster, since as elsewhere in Egypt, the site of his dig is honeycombed with underground passages. But Egyptian authorities these days are impatient. With balloons and magnetometers, they want to map important archaeological sites and eventually systematically probe and drill the sands to thoroughly catalog the treasures that lie beneath, eliminating as much as possible, to the chagrin of some, the chance of discovery. Uh, now archaeology and uh, national heritage must not and should not depend on chances, should depend on science, science alone. Modern science seems far removed from the rarely seen tomb of Queen Nefertari. She had depended on the gods above for her deliverance, and yet, 3,300 years after her mummified remains were brought here, it is high-tech powers on high that protect her tomb. The hieroglyphics and wall paintings devastated by humidity, American researchers are studying satellite photos to help find where the moisture is coming from and how it can be stopped. Even water, it seems, can no longer disappear in the desert sands. We'll start on that wall over there. Do you really expect to find the entrance to an anchor's tomb over there? Well, we didn't expect to find the entrance to the Bronx subway, old boy. <laughs> and so, with French teams scaling the pyramids to coax forth their secrets, the Japanese directing the progress of their ping-clinking ground-searching radar toward greater discoveries, and the Americans talking about poking a probe under the belly of the long-suffering Sphinx, 
it seems as if the mysteries of millennia might not survive another lifetime. Jim Bitterman, NBC News, Cairo.